Forest rangers and campers, what are your unexplainable and downright creepy stories, part three? Please make sure to subscribe and share to show your appreciation. Account one. Me and my two other friends were walking on our way home from the summit of a MTB, also in southern Luzon, when a kid came to us asking if he can guide us for five pesos only. He was dressed with a blue checkered shirt and a white pants. He was very well groomed. His clothes were wrinkle, free, and his hair wasn't even messy at all. We knew the trail by heart, so we kept on declining his offer. Eventually we agreed, since we figured he would follow us anyway. When we started to walk again, he suddenly stopped following us. I called out to him, but he didn't mind me. He just stood still. I looked at my companions, and they were very scared. So I said, Okay, stay there if you want, but you won't get your five pesos and left. Now I told this story to fellow mountaineers, and they told me the kid was probably a child of one of the guides. Count two. This is a very popular urban legend surrounding a certain MTC, also called the Devil's Mountain. The famous legend narrates the story of a couple who went on a hike in MTC at midnight. They got lost when they accidentally took an unusual trail on their way to campsite. Even if the weather is threatening because of a storm and there was zero visibility, they still continued their hike. They arrived in a point where the trail forked and they turned left when they should have turned right. The left was a deadly trail, thus they never made it to campsite. According to local folks, the two were not found until now. Account 3. A group of hikers, together with a guide, went on a rarely used trail. On the way, they passed by a small village where the elders advised them to continue the trek but leave the only girl in the group at the village. They politely declined and continued hiking. Halfway through, the guide told them that he could only go as far as the first half. Being experienced hikers, they paid the guide and continued until they came to a fork in the road. As they were debating which road to take, a couple stumbled upon them and told them to take the left side. They continued following the couple even as it got dark and started to rain. Suddenly, their flashlights turned off simultaneously, but they still tried to follow the couple. When the rain stopped and their flashlights came back on, the couple was gone, and one of the group members slipped and almost fell from a ravine. It was the girl. Account 4. German tourists are different. I was doing some stuff in Death Valley NP a couple of summers ago and left via the opposite direction of the construction crew, so this is a second hand story. As we were all leaving after a very long night of pouring concrete, they should have been done at around sunrise, but things didn't finish up until like 1 p.m. or so. The archaeologist, let's call him Art, saw a faint glimmer of silver in a bush. Thinking that it was an old balloon, a huge problem. Don't release balloons. They always come down somewhere and end up as litter. He turned around to retrieve it. Instead, he found a German man sitting there under car windshield sunscreen thing with a piece of rolling luggage by his side. This was an area that was closed off to the public until the road was repaired and nobody would be back through until the next day, so he stopped to talk to the man, apparently the German man. Klaus is a good German name, let's use that, had been dropped off by his wife and mother-in-law the afternoon before and was in the middle of a long hike like 20, 30 miles or so. He had been hiking all night and was taking a break to rest during the day. There were plans to meet up in a day or two, but the women were in Vegas at the casinos. After some discussion, Art learned that Klaus had no food or supplies and had only drank a few sips from one of his three one two-liter water bottles since he began the trek. He thought rationing it would be best since he only had a small amount of water. The temperature was already in the 120 degree Fahrenheit range, and Art had to explain that the guy could not stay there, or he would very literally die. Klaus said that he would be fine because he trained by sitting in a sauna a number of times before he left Germany. Plus, how would his wife know where to pick him up if they left, after explaining the difference between sitting in a sauna and hiking with no food in a dry desert? Art proceeded to question what would happen if his wife's car broke down or if she got delayed for some reason. There is no phone service in that part of the park and nobody was supposed to be in the area to begin with, so Klaus would be SOL. If his wife didn't arrive, 
Claus finally agreed to jump into Art's truck and drive to the nearby town, 20 miles away. As soon as he got into the truck and took a few sips of cool water, Claus realized how hot his body actually was and that he was actually in pretty bad shape. When they got to the town, they actually met Claus's wife and mother-in-law in the parking lot of the only gas station. It turns out that they had broken down there and never made it to Vegas. After talking a little, Art had to get off, to sleep. He had been up all night and reminded Klaus to grab his roller suitcase from the back of the truck. Art casually asked what was inside, and Klaus opened it to reveal a suitcase full of water bottles. Klaus was so delirious from heat that he forgot the heavy bag that he had somehow been rolling across the desert was full of water. Delirium like that is a sign of sunstroke. Klaus probably wouldn't have made it through the rest of the day had Art not insisted on him getting into the truck. TLDR, German goes hiking in Death Valley and would have died if not for an archaeologist who was on his way to a hotel for a nap. Account 5. Back in the early 90s, my brothers and I were staying with my cousin and her husband, who I'll call Scott, who was a DNR officer. This was opening day of Deer Bow, season in northern Michigan. While I was at least a mile from any road or trail, I stumbled across an area that looked like people had been camping recently. They'd even built this weird outdoor kitchen. Being a naive 16 to 17 year old, the kitchen confused me. But I figured they had left because hunting season had started, so I just continued on my way. That night I was telling everyone about it when Scott gets serious and asks me about what it looked like and where it was. After I told him he warned me not to go back there and to be glad no one was there, apparently some locals had multiple locations like that where they would cook meth so they wouldn't blow up their houses in two, make it harder to get caught. I guess Scott reported it to the cops and they raided it a couple days later. I must have missed it. But the guys had set up multiple trail cams, which were damn expensive at that time, all around the area. Based on the pics on them, I missed the guys by a few hours. They were heavily armed while I only had a bow and a knife. On the surface, it seems like a well-thought-out plan from some smart people, but they weren't very smart after all. Scott filled us in later on some details. Apparently, they didn't clear the images off the cameras before leaving. The images, though too low of a resolution to recognize their faces, showed them not only cooking the meth, but also carrying illegal guns and riding off on customized four-wheelers known to everyone in the area, they ended up getting 20 years in prison. Account 6. I have so many of these, but I'll share my favorite. I have been a ranger in the USFS for almost 15 years. But this takes place about three years after I joined. We were getting calls about a lone wolf with a collar on hanging around campsites. Weird, since wolves aren't known to be in the area. But when you work in the field long enough, you start to realize anything is possible. No calls had mentioned violent behavior from the animal, thank God. I departed from the station around noon to check out the places that it had been sighted. Wandered around for about three hours. No further calls during that time, until I took a break for water, sat down, had a snack, drank some water, and was getting ready to go again when the thing was about 20 feet out, trotting near the tree line. It seemed friendly and had the collar, so I whistled to it and he came over to me. Getting a closer look, I could see it wasn't a wolf. It was huge, but it was dark and didn't have the right body structure, though I could see why it'd be confusing from a distance. I radioed in and reported that I had the dog with me, but as soon as I said I'd bring it in, the dog fucking took off, like he was playing to see how far he could get me to chase him. Typical dog behavior, I went after it, and I swear it was a game of chase for at least five minutes as we steadily ran through the forest. Please don't go running through woods unless you know the area like the back of your hand. The dog finally slowed down near a rock bed creek area and started pacing around a spot. I drew closer and didn't see anything off at first. Then I noticed it. The overgrowth had almost disguised what appeared to be bones, I called it in immediately and another team was sent to recover the remains. When I went to retrieve the dog, he was just gone. But honestly, it wasn't a priority at that point. He was friendly enough, and I figured we'd catch up with him later. The bones were identified as a teenage male's, died by a self, inflicted gunshot wound to the head, 
He'd been reported missing in the area long before I became a ranger, and there'd been pretty much no hope of finding him. I spoke to his mom on the phone. She called to thank me personally, and she asked how I'd found her son. I mentioned the black dog, then thought I'd said something wrong since there was a pause on her side of the line. After I gave a couple details about the dog, she quietly explained that her son, who struggled with making connections, had sunken into a deep depression after the death of his best friend, the very dog that had led me to him. I think I spent the rest of the day stunned. I continue to be in disbelief, in a way, but I know what happened. Also, throwaway account because my main would give away who the individual in this post is and where it took place. The family still grieves for their son. Account 7. Not a ranger, but here's a good wood story. It's late spring. Heavy rain had flooded the dike and public hunting grounds, so I get the idea to go fishing in the shallows with my buddy. We have a good time, didn't catch anything, and it's getting dark, so we light a fire to dry off before heading back. As the sunlight is swallowed up, we hear something I can only describe as a blood-curdling scream coming from the distance. A little girl, almost. Frogs, we thought, and kept talking, twigs snapping. Then again, but much closer. We heard it. Could have been as close as 30 feet at the tree line. We hightail it out of there and laugh it off once we get home. Fast forward six years, I'm on lunch break, and I'm telling this story to my lead, and he pulls up a video on YouTube and lets me listen. The same scream, he gives me the phone, and I see a mountain lion. They make that noise as a final warning. Account 8. I have a friend who is a trail ranger, basically a ranger who can't get you in trouble. He told me about this time he was gathering illegally placed wildlife cameras and knocking down hunting stands, feeders, and blinds with another actual ranger. The other ranger wasn't feeling well, so he said he was going to head back as it's a one-hour ATV ride. Friend finished up the last one when he heard voices. Keep in mind he's far off the beaten path, he called out, and no one replied. As it was getting dark, he started to head back and found that his ATV wouldn't start, he then noticed that the battery was not connected anymore. He reconnected it and started to drive, but it wasn't going fast at all. Less than a half mile later, the whole thing died. He radioed back, basically saying, Hey guys, I need someone to come pick me up. They told him they would, but it would be an hour. He asked if the other guy got back, and they said no. He settled down and started a small fire. But before long, he heard voices again. It's dark. He's not happy. The voices sound like an argument now. Someone was angry and yelling at someone else who sounded more scared. He called out and asked if anyone needed help. The voices didn't seem to care. He guessed they had to be less than a 1,000 feet away. He radioed again and they said they were having trouble finding what path he might be on and haven't left yet. He asked them just to get the other ranger to tell them about where they are because he left with the iPad that had the map. They said he still isn't back. About three more minutes go by and he hears the voices start up again. He decides to walk to them, hoping maybe they can stop being drunk assholes and maybe have a map. He walked in their direction, but the voices seemed to be getting further as he got closer. Finally, after 20 minutes, he gave up and walked back. He got a radio call and they said the other guy was found passed out covered in vomit and was being taken to the hospital, but he crossed off everywhere. They found a stand, so they have a general idea where he is. Then the radio died. Then the voices came back. Bored out of his mind, he decided to listen to what they were arguing about picking up things like, Well, it wasn't yours to take. I don't fucking care. You knew better and so on. His guess was two hunters arguing over a kill. Then he heard the one shout something intelligible. Then silence. The bang, a gunshot. He doused his fire and hid. After that, he heard nothing. Just his breathing for the next half hour until he saw ATV lights. He told the guy picking him up everything, and they called back. They had people looking for three hours and found nothing. They came back the next day with police and dogs. After about an hour, a shallow grave was found, and in it was a long, dead man who had clearly been shot in the face. Thing was, it was a skeleton who was there for years. So either the argument he heard just ended with a bang and both parties went home last night, or he heard the murder of someone from years ago.